Hi, I'm Christine Rasmina. Hi, I'm Vahita Janarthaman. I'm Maggie DeVoe. I'm Emily Sick. I'm Cara Val. And I'm Jacob Ellis, and we are Team 2, and we're going to be discussing with our entrepreneur, Trevor Miller, who is... Alright, thank you so much for coming with, uh, to talk to us today, Trevor. So one of our questions today was, how did you come up with Augments, Miller Mobile, and High Style Consulting, and how is it an opportunity and not just an idea? Well, um, in high school I started Miller Mobile uh, basically because I saw a trend uh, in my friends um, wanting to sort of one-up each other with their um, stereo equipment. Um, and really, you know, it's, it's actually incredibly easy to get into business in the state of Indiana. All you have to do is register the name that you'll be doing your business as in the county that you'll be doing business and um, filing your taxes with your TID number at the end of the year. So as soon as I figured those things out, um, I started selling to um, friends and other kids in high school. Uh, and it was a moderate success, I mean, for as long as it lasted. Um, and Augments uh, was sort of a you know, brainchild uh, that we had after researching nootropic medicine, um, which is basically a, you know, it's, it's, a very, it's a very new and sort of emerging field in dietary supplements um, where you try to you know, enhance or increase um, neurological functioning in the brain. Um, so we wanted to make, a, um, we wanted to make a, a dietary supplement that was affordable and accessible. So we wanted to take uh, something that is typically very hard to get and very expensive and make it such that people could get it over the counter. Um, I mean, the real, the real ethos behind the project is that there's such a high, um, there's such a high use of uh, substance abuse on college campuses because kids are trying to get ahead. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with people abusing Adderall and Ritalin. Uh, we wanted to see nootropics be a safe alternative to those things. Um, and lastly, uh, High Soap Consulting Group. Um, I've been thankful enough to uh, have the opportunity to use my extracurricular uh, work experience in political campaign, um, political campaigning, uh, both field and finance work, into um, you know a uh, sort of um, lucrative side project, if you will, outside of my nine to five that I don't have yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Trevor, with your ventures, what struggles have you incurred trying to make money? Uh, what successes have you had making money? And uh, are there any things you'd do differently to turn profit or start up your businesses? Yeah, and you know, I think one of the most common adages in entrepreneurship is it takes money to make money. Um, you know, if you want to talk about roadblocks in the um, entrepreneurial process, it's almost always money. Um, you know, right now, the reason we haven't fully pursued augments and seen it on shelves is because we're in a funding gap. Um, to have our product tested in the lab to get um, an FDA approved label. Um, it's a couple thousand dollars to get tested. Alright, so you talked about subwoofer supplements and a uh, consulting firm, but you studied philosophy. You've created movies and pursued a diverse amount of projects and products. But if you were if you were to put all your time and effort into one project, what are you passionate about and what would you want to pursue with that? Um, you know, if I had all the time in the world, um, I would like to fundraise professionally um, for not-for-profits. I think that there's a wealth of charities out there that need, um, need more attention than they get and more money than they receive. Um, you know, frankly, I'm, I'm a member of um, a collegiate and professional fraternity that does charitable giving um, to a number of different places. I mean, uh, in Freemasons, I give money to the Shriners Children's Hospitals, um, and you know, it's it's. I don't think that people. I think people take for granted the fact that there are institutions in place that give um, free, free care. I mean, medical care mm -hmm. um, to children, yeah. and I mean that that all comes at a very heavy weight. Um, the money's out there. The good intentions are out there. Um, as you know, the wealthy are the largest contributors to charity, mostly because they have the means to do so. Um, but, you know, it, it takes a special kind of person to devote their time to outreach um, and to information. Thank you. Go. Oh. All right, Trevor, thank you so much for the great insight on your passion and your personal interests. I'd like to ask you a little bit about throughout your experiences in various um, entrepreneurial ventures that you've 
at taking part in. What are some challenges that you could maybe uh, tell us about something you learned that we could learn if uh, being an entrepreneur is something we choose to do in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing is to understand the parameters under which you're doing business. Um, for instance, in all three instances that I've been doing business um, extracurricularly, um, I've been doing it as a sole proprietorship, which means that um, in the event that there is um, like legal implications that are ever done um, or taken against me, um, I would be on the hook for it almost in at well, no, absolutely. Um, you know, if you have an LLC, you've got a little bit more protection, um, and if you've got a corporation, you've got almost infinite protection. <laughs> but um, you know, I mean, you really got to scale. What, you, what kind of business you're doing with the type of legal entity you take on. Um, you know, for example, when I was in high school and I was selling those uh, subwoofers, I didn't, um, I didn't report my sales tax correctly. Or, I'm sorry, I, I reported my sales tax correctly, but I didn't report my excise tax, tax correctly, which, um, to my knowledge, was how much product I had on hand at any given time. Um, and being that I didn't have any product on hand, I just recorded it as zero, and um, that wasn't satisfied. Um, and I got billed for like eight thousand dollars or something crazy that, you know, I I didn't do eight thousand dollars in business or have eight thousand dollars worth of stock on hand. But you know, when the state doesn't have the appropriate numbers, um, you know, they can't they can't appropriately assess, so they make an estimate and then they send that to you. Um, So how did you start, um, like, deal with the $8,000 that you got billed? You know, that's a lot of money considering we, you're, you were in high school, like, and you get that kind of a thing in the business. How do you deal with that kind of challenge? Yeah, so what had happened um, was that they had actually assessed those um, excise taxes mm -hmm. for a year after I had actually concluded doing business with the state. So, um, or doing business in the state, mm -hmm. rather. Um, so what I did was uh, I essentially showed the state, you know, through various letters and faxes and emails um, that I had actually dissolved my business before the tax year by which they were trying to bill me for. Um, you know, so like I said, I mean, at first it was daunting, you know, to, to see like a bill that high, you know, I was 16 years old and had that kind of cash, but, um, you know, it was, it was just a matter of um, making sure to find the appropriate bureaucratic channels mm -hmm. by which I was able to um, resolve the problem. Thank you so much for your valuable information. Great. What motivates you to keep working and how do you define success on each of your entrepreneurial ventures? Yeah, so um, to keep motivated, I mean really <laughs> like the biggest motivator of all in any type of business um, is unfortunately profit. Uh, it's not so much to see, you know, an ideology or, um, you know, a dream achieved, um, because to do those things you're always going to need capital. Um, so, I mean, really the motivation is to always try to achieve more, to try, always try to make more money. Um, and then you can pursue the things that you want to do. Um, like, for example, I mean, if you make a lot of money in a year, you can give to a charity, you can write it off on your taxes, and even further help your business. Um, and then, um, I'm sorry, what was the second question? How do you define success on your entrepreneurship ventures? I mean, success is what you make of it. I mean, really, um, you know, not to be too in depth, but I think to make value judgments, there's uh, quite a lot, quite a lot of prescription involved. Um, you know, people will get tied down into thinking that uh, success is what somebody somebody else tells them, like, oh, he's a successful guy, she's a successful guy. Um, I think that if you are satisfied with the work that you're doing, that's the only thing that really matters. Um, and you know, have to say, like, what is what is success in entrepreneurship? Um, in the very etymology of the word entrepreneur, it's French for risk, risk taker. So I suppose if you've taken any kind of risk, you've, uh, you've been successful. That's very good. Thank you. Hi. Um, now, you're really young, and you've already had your hands in a lot of different entrepreneurial experiences. Now, what attracts you to entrepreneurial ventures more so than, like, a traditional job? Well, um, I think that it would be I think it would be untrue <laughs> to say that I wasn't looking for a nine to five traditional job, uh, because I am. Um, frankly, I think that um, there's, a, there's a bad stereotype against the moonlighting entrepreneur, somebody who 
takes their time outside of work to go ahead and pursue things that um, that they love. And um, that isn't to say that you know I, I choose one or the other. I'd say that uh, it's a matter of giving both each their equal attention. Um, now you know, had I been the heir to a trust fund, or um, had I won the lottery, absolutely I would try to take my entrepreneurial pursuits into a full time job and do what I love full time. Um, but I think that really. Uh, Doing what you love is a matter of perspective. Um, you know, so long as you know you enjoy what you're doing inside and outside of work, uh, you should be happy. Do you think then that you will continue to try to start companies and like go on these new ventures throughout your whole life, or do you think there's going to be a stopping point? Absolutely. Um, I think that I'm going to pursue entrepreneurial ventures until you know my um, ideation of success is going to achieve. Um,